So I understand that you are one of the co-directors, Dean, Dean Hamer. Yes, I'm Dean Hamer, and I'm one of three directors of our short film, Kapai Mahu. Okay. My first question is about uh, the film itself. It's a wonderful film. Uh, it's a tale, and it's also about the present, uh, because we discover at the end what happened with the wizard stones. So what is behind the project? What, why did you have to do this film? The project started almost 10 years ago when mm -hmm. Joe and I were making a documentary film about Kumu Hina, who is a Hawaiian teacher and a practitioner. And she pointed out these stones on Waikiki Beach, which are still there today, passed by millions of people, and said, you know what those are? And of course we didn't. But after many years of research, we realized that these represent these maku healing spirits and that they're a very important sacred space for Hawaiians. But that even though the stones are there, no one really knows the story and how these stones represent these amazing male and female dual characters. So we thought it was important to, um, to tell that story and we thought a film would be a good way to do it. Absolutely. I, I searched about these stones on the internet and I found on some websites for tourists that these stones are very badly understood. Uh, and people, I don't believe, I don't think that they really understand what this uh, memorial means. Exactly. And now we're in this day when, at least in the United States, we're tearing down memorials because they're to bad people, people that had slaves and so on. This is a memorial to real heroes, people who helped the Hawaiians learn how to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. And yet that's not understood. Um, and the reason it's not understood, it was understood 100 and 200 years ago by Hawaiians, but modern Westerners and colonizers and missionaries didn't like the fact that the healers were mahu, which we would call transgender today. They thought that was a bad thing. And so, they hid that part of the story. But in doing that, they took away the power of the stones. If you don't understand what they represent, you can't really access the power. So that's why it was important. Even though Hina is Hawaiian, she herself did not know the full story until she became, you know, uh, until she learned Hawaiian language and could figure it out for herself. So it's uh, very poorly misunderstood. Can I ask you if you're uh, Hawaiian yourself? No, I am uh, of European descent. So is mm -hmm. Joe. Uh, mm -hmm. We are uh, gay, but mm -hmm. uh, not transgender. Hina is native Hawaiian, and she's also transgender. Um, the animator for the project, Daniel Sousa, is, mm -hmm. I think, heterosexual. Uh, he's an <laughs> islander. He's from Cape Verde. Um, so we're a very mixed group. But the story is told from a very Hawaiian perspective because it's actually told in an ancient Hawaiian dialect. Uh, only 50 people speak it today. So even though we ourselves are mixed, we wanted to tell it from the perspective of how a Hawaiian would understand the story. Yes, because there's also, as always, the issue of a cultural appropriation. So you had to work with native people from Hawaii. I wouldn't even say um, that we worked with, that was really Hina is the leader of the project. And it, okay. we're simply helping her to realize her idea. Um, and yes, it's very interesting because um, there's this question of how do you transmit a story that was originally completely oral? Mm -hmm. And to try to do that today in oral form is not very successful, especially if it's in a foreign, a very foreign language like Nihau Hawaiian. So Hina really thought it would be more powerful if we could use modern digital media and animation to tell the story, because it would be possible to get it out to more people, Hawaiian and foreigners alike. So yeah. that's how we developed the collaboration. I know that the film was shown uh, at the Annecy Festival in the uh, uh, perspective section, I think. Yes. Uh, it's in, in uh, our international competition. It's a wonderful film, but what is your 
who is your target audience? Do you want the film is for who is for kids, for adults, for students? What do you want to do? What what, what do you attend with the film? We would like every one of the five million tourists that walk by these stones every year, along with the 300,000 Hawaiians who walk by the stone every year, along with their children, all to know what the stones are about. So it's actually a very wide international audience, but really our hope is that we'll bring understanding about these stones and then a broader understanding beyond that. Uh, we didn't make it for children. And then we started getting invitations from children's film festivals mm -hmm. or in Canada, even uh, in Ottawa, which has a big animation festival. Yes. They put it in the children's section. And um, Hina, who is a teacher, showed it to some of her kids and kids even six and seven years old really love the magic stones. They think mm -hmm. it's magic. So we're, we're glad it's reaching people all ages. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm 55 and I really loved uh, the film. I would like to talk about the chromatic range, mm. uh, the shades of ochre, of red, uh, the colors of the sand, of the sun mix perfectly well. There's something very, very beautiful about the film. Can you tell us about the, the artistic design, the concept? Yeah, the animator is Daniel Sousa, who has a long history of um, doing animations about legendary and mythic uh, schemes. But the artistic inspiration came from uh, samples of tapa cloth and samples of laohala weaving, which are Polynesian art forms uh, evident throughout Hawaii and throughout Polynesia. And it was really those very natural uh, dyed colors that inspired the palette. Um, so we, we like that because we feel it looks like Hawaiians might have told this story if they had animation a thousand years ago. Was the film seen in Hawaii yet? Oh, it's been seen by many people here in Hawaii, and it will mm. be featured at the Bishop Museum, which is our big uh, Hawaiian museum. Its first official festival screening is going to come up here in just a few weeks at the Hawaii International Film Festival. We wanted to hold it for that. Yeah, to be honest, when I saw the film, I, 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 I was entertained, entertained really, but I saw, I learned something, and I think that this was your desire it was absolutely yes. uh are you an animator no i am not an animator joe and i are documentary I'm filmmakers. filmmaker okay yeah. okay that's how we met Tina. and uh our films even our first film about hawaii called kumuhina about Tina, mm -hmm. used a little bit of animation because we wanted to explain what mahu are and yeah. to try to do that just in words and to try to do it in live action is impossible because it's this abstract idea of the spirit of male and spirit of female coming together. So Absolutely. we were really attracted to animation from quite a few years ago. And you were, so there are three directors and there's also Daniel who is the yep. animation director. So how did yep. it go? I mean, for people working together, uh, I think that you probably did uh, teleworking because you were not in uh, probably yes. not in uh, Hawaii. So how did it go? Was it complicated? Was what, what was the challenge? You know, it was probably the smoothest film that we've had yet because uh, Daniel is really lovely to work with. And Tina and I and Joe have come up with a good working relationship. We've been working, this is our fifth film together. We've been working together for 10 years. So it was actually very smooth. The most complicated ones are when you just make it with your spouse. Then there can be lots of back and forth. <laughs> But when there's other mediators, uh, we all respected one another and it went surprisingly smoothly. Um, the film only took a year to make. The research to figure out the story took about nine years. So that was uh -huh. a lot of time. You know, we see many, many short films, animated short films coming from the U.S., but I have to admit that films from Hawaii are quite uncommon. So what is the state of animation in uh, Hawaii now? That's a good question, and I think it has been uh, fairly sparse, but there's a real renaissance in Hawaiian filmmaking now. We are funded by Pacific Islanders and Communications, which is part of our public broadcast system specializing in Pacific Islanders. And over the last 10 years, they've supported more and more filmmakers. Uh, 
now animation is really coming to the fore. They've got two new professors at the university and Daniel was working with other Hawaiian filmmakers. And so it's, it's coming up uh, from a fairly low level to something that I think will be quite interesting in the next few years. Okay. Uh, my last question, Dean, uh, if you were in Montreal uh, uh, to attend our festival, if you were to introduce your film to our audience, what would you say? I would say that at this time of a great pandemic and sickness, it's important to realize that we need to respect all healers for the good that they do and not worry about if they're a little bit different than you. And I'd say we need to realize that he, disease isn't just about the particular virus or what happens in your lung. It's diseases affect everybody and they affect people in many different ways. And Hawaiians and others have known that for a long, long time. A lot of indigenous people recognize that. And perhaps part of this, the message of this film is that um, there's a lot of different ways towards healing and we need to ex explore all of them. And we need peace. And we need peace in the world. Peace yes. and justice. Yeah. And justice. Thanks a lot, Dean, for this discussion. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to talk to you. I really hope that in the near future, we will have the occasion to have you or one of your colleagues uh, in Montreal. And I wish you the best of luck for the coming days, because I know that next week, something important happen, will happen in the US. So uh, Hawaii is an independent nation. It was illegally taken over by the United States. And if things don't go the right way, we may be leaving again. So okay. merci. Take care, Dean. Good luck. And uh, thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. We're so delighted to be part of the Animation Festival in Montreal. Okay. Merci. Goodbye. Bye. Aloha. Thanks. Aloha.